I recently went to a local trade event where a bunch of guys who met online and decided to pretend to be eight again got together over a beer to awkwardly shuffle through each other's discard piles in hopes of trading some cardboard, just like the good old days. It was actually kind of fun. One of the piles I flipped through was a mishmash of Topps Heritage Commons separated by teams from over the last decade, owned by a guy that opened a lot of packs but found few cards. Topps introduced the Heritage set in 2001 for their 50th anniversary, with modern players on card designs of the famous 52 set. Each subsequent release was from the corresponding set from 50 years prior. So the 2002 Heritage set was in the style of the 53 set, the 2003 set was in the style of the 54, and so forth. That has continued to today, so the 2023 Heritage set is like the 74 cards. But then there's also Topps Archives and Topps Tribute and the Allen and Ginter sets too. So you'll come across tribute cards with modern players from past designs outside the heritage lineage, like this Alec Bohm in the style of the 2001 set. And okay, I'll let it slide. But then there's old players in newer designs, like this Richie Ashburn in the style of the 75 set, and that's a stretch. But then there's also these tops inserts of Hall of Famers that just make absolutely no sense. Like this 2013 insert of Mike Schmidt, in the style of 72. Schmidt's rookie was in 73, but he made his debut in late 72, so he was an actual player then, and cameras existed, so we have pictures of Mike Schmidt in a Phillies uniform in 1972. Even worse is this insert of Schmidt in 83, in the style of the 83 set. But that card already exists! Same for this insert gem in the style of 86. So okay, the baseball card designers don't always have the best ideas, or any ideas in some cases. But there are rare occasions when the designers do their homework and really make good cards. So back to the story. So I was flipping through this mishmash pile of Topps Heritage Commons, and I come to this guy, Pat Neshek, and I just kind of froze. I studied it for a few seconds, and then smirked like a kid who understands an adult joke for the first time. Nice work, Tops. Really well done. Pat Neshek was a journeyman bullpen pitcher who put together a 13-year career in Major League Baseball, in which he appeared in 544 total games for eight different ball clubs with an overall ERA of 2.82. He wasn't an all-star. He was just a reliably average player who lived out his dream of having a solid career and a fairly long one at that, playing a kid's game for big money. Hats off to you, Pat. The back of the card is fairly unremarkable. Basic stat lines showing a pitcher who found a way to make it work. Some random trivia. Some useless facts. But that card number? Perfect. If you're not already in on the joke, here's the punchline. This is the real 1970 Topps card number 252. Lowell Palmer. Also a journeyman bullpen pitcher but one who makes Pat Neshek look like Steve Carlton. See episode 18. Palmer went 5-18 and 18 in his patchy six-year career, appearing in just over 100 total games and racking up a career ERA of 5.29. He wasn't good. But wow, was he interesting. He developed a cult following in baseball card land because of those shades. In the golden era and beyond, there were a few players that wore corrective lenses. Cookie Rojas was famous for them. And some of them had tinted lenses for day games, like Stan Lapata here in 1957. But those weren't shades like we know them now. Lowell Palmer, he wore shades. And he was a baseball card first. The story goes that the Topps photographer posed him staring directly into the sun, and Palmer was squinting his eyes shut to try and see making for a terrible picture. So he grabbed his shades, and a baseball card legend was born. When the card came out, it was a total sensation, and Palmer became known as the guy in the shades. He encored his trademark in 1971. He was traded to the White Sox for 72, who made him wear his tinted corrective lenses instead. The 70 and 71 cards, though, pure baseball card gold. The otherwise mundane details of the Neshek card come into sharp focus when compared to the Palmer, 
apart from just the identical card numbers. Both right-handed pitchers wearing ridiculous sunglasses. Both get a useless fact. Nishek was the team foosball champion, and Palmer raised pigeons. Nishek is noted to be a unique personality, and by all accounts, Lowell Palmer was a real looney tune. He even tried to snuggle with manager Gene Walk's daughter in 1968 during spring training, which earned him another full year in the minors in AAA to think about what he'd done. He wasn't called up until 69, after Mock departed to manage the expansion Montreal Expos. That's a tribute card right there. Just when I think, Tops can't possibly get any dumber with their inserts and endless set expansions, and they go do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> and it's made all the better because Pat Neshek himself is a noted baseball card collector and was in on the joke from the very beginning. Pat Neshek has a legendary collection of modern autographs, which he collected during his long career in Major League Baseball. Back to the story. So I traded a few Giants commons, mostly old Will Clark and Kevin Mitchell cards and the like, for a pile of Topps Heritage commons from the last decade, including the Pat Neshek. We didn't check comps. Nobody was looking to screw or get screwed. We all had some fun and came away with something we liked more than what we had at the start. I've been collecting baseball cards for nearly 40 years, and a good old-fashioned trade night can still be a lot of fun. And even though it can get monotonous to thumb through another pile of commons, thinking that you've seen them all, little discoveries like the 2019 Topps Heritage number 252 Pat Neshek card ensures that I will keep thumbing, keep hunting, and keep trading. But it's way more fun now that I can do all three with a beer. Thanks for watching. I hope thumbing through commons is never a bore. So tune in next time for more baseball card stories, legends, and lore.